Hi, Mike here, and welcome to my latest video. This one is going to be a look around my van that I built for my um, van life and traveling in. Um, for those that you that have been following the uh, channel, you'll be aware that I uh, got this van last year and um, I started the, uh, the build pretty much as soon as I got it. So um, I'll give you a look around and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so what we have here is a Fiat Ducato. It's a 2021 model, picked it up in January 2021. It's a, a Techno, medium wheelbase, medium height. The Techno basically just has a, a little bit more um, fruit on it. So it's got the alloy wheels, it's got the air conditioning, um, sat nav, touch screen, radio, info system it's got um, like I say it's got a, a little bit more um, in terms of the specification over a standard Ducato it's a 2.3 uh, 140 um, brake horsepower I think that is um, model so it's it's got slightly more power than the standard uh, Ducato it's powered by an IV core um, diesel engine which is uh, very reliable and has very long service intervals. So looking at the exterior, it's, it's essentially, um, try to keep it as stealthy as possible, but obviously at some stage I'm going to register it as a camper van, so it's got to look like a camper van at some point in the future. Um, I fitted the awning, which is a Fiamma um, FATS awning, um, so that gives the uh, the van uh, some shaded area in the summer I can wind it out and me and Bronson can sit outside and keep ourselves out of direct sunlight when it's really warm in, in the English summer here on the two days of the summer when it is really warm <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, you can see there I've got the uh, the Truma exhaust and inlet vent there and I've also fitted uh, an underslung um, LPG tank so that's the fill point and you can just see up there my solar panels I'll just uh, see if I can reach up a little bit I've got two solar panels they're um, 350 watts in total So all of the work I've done on this I did myself, I fitted the windows, I've got the two side windows. I need to fit an extra window probably in this side to comply with the DVLA rules when, to, when I eventually get it changed over into a camper van. I know a lot of people have had issues with that. I've got the Tahula bike rack already fitted on the back and I have used it. But as it's winter, I'm keeping my bike in the garage at the moment. But in the summer, my bike will live on the back, which will free up a little bit of space in the garage uh, for storing stuff. So we'll have a quick look in the garage first while we're round here. So I keep all of my tools and because um, I, I do work as a handyman and other work for other people on their van conversions so I have all of my tools and equipment in here I also have my mountain bike as you can see in there I've got the it's mounted onto a, a fork bracket I also have my water tank it's an 80 litre Fiamma water tank and I've fitted um, a, a, a gauge, just a, it's just a couple of elbow pieces with a piece of tube so I can actually see how much water I've still got in there. Just a quick visual check to see how much water I've got left when I need to fill up. And you can see my electrical system. So I have three methods of charging the uh, two lithium ion batteries I've got there charges off uh, a DC DC charger 
uh, which works when the ignition is on and the engine is running so that charges the batteries I also have a solar controller which takes the power that's generated by the solar panels and converts that into power to charge the batteries and I also have down there which is a, a mains charger so when I'm at a campsite where I can plug in I plug in there and um, top the batteries off that way although to be honest I've been in here all winter and I've seldom really needed to I, I get enough power from my solar and from the um, driving that I do to keep the batteries fully charged so the system's working really well I've never really required um, getting the batteries um, topped up again So that's the uh, the garage space. You'll see here, uh, just out of interest, I've got one of my heating ducts comes up from the heater and directs the heat up the back of the bed there. So there is a gap between the doors and the bed. So the warm hair sort of comes up through through the back there and um, uh, heats this end of the. Um, the camper and also puts a bit of that warm air into the garage space so I don't get any damp or anything in there. You can see my dog, this is Bronson for those who haven't been introduced to him yet. So uh, I'll close the garage up and we'll go inside and have a look inside. Okay well uh, we'll go inside and uh, I'll show you around the inside. Okay, first of all, you'll notice my fridge freezer, which is in the entrance there. I chose to put it there so it was easy to access. It's a 12 volt Dometic unit. Uh, from memory, I think it's 85 litres. Um, the fridge compartment is bigger than the freezer compartment, and I'll uh, show you that in a moment. So just looking from the, um, from the outside in, you'll notice I've got the swivelling passenger seat. That's where I sit at night and read a book or watch YouTube videos. And so that's my, uh, that's my seat. I have the uh, kitchen units there. And the bed. You'll see that I have all of my um, controls for my Truma, inverter, my Victron um, monitor, battery monitor, and all of my switches for my lights, they're all here. So when I switch my lights on, they switch on from here. And I also have the control there for the water pump. I also have a cigarette style socket there for charging. And also some USB points there. And down here I have my gauge for my LPG. So looking at that I'm just, just, just above half full. I have had the heating on quite a bit the last few days. It has been cold and my remote control for my Max Air fan, which is just up here. I also have two 240 plug sockets that also have USB chargers built in, and that runs off my inverter when it's switched on here, so I'll just switch it on so you can see. So that's, that's switched on now. So power will be now going to those sockets. So having that remote um, switching is really, really good because then the inverter doesn't have to be switched on all the time. I can just switch it on and off as I need it. Because even when you have your inverter switched on but not drawing any power, um, it will use a little bit of power while it's switched on. Okay, we'll step inside. That's the bed, nothing much to talk about there. It's uh, I use... Um, a futon um, for the mattress because I, I prefer a really firm bed. Bronson sleeps on there as well. At night I just turn his bed round and he, he sleeps up against the back doors and I sleep 
on this side of the bed. I've got some storage nets which I've put on the walls which just gives me somewhere to store stuff that's just loose. I have my, my jackets and my mountain bike helmet there just to stop that rattling around. The roof is um, stripped down plywood, just Danish oiled. You'll see that I did a video on that. Creates a really nice effect when the lights are all on. And I built the cupboards. So this one has all my books in it. This one has food. The essential stuff, tea and coffee. I have a Dometic free burner ring, a free burner hob, electronic ignition, works really well. I have a small sink and I keep a plastic bowl in there just to, um, then I've got, uh, I've got somewhere to store stuff that I don't want the basin getting scratched up when things are rattling around in there so I tend to store stuff in there. This is my water obviously hot and cold I do have hot water I'll show you that in a minute. Obviously I've got drawers. These are IKEA kitchen units I've modified them slightly um, but I, I, I wanted something I could get hold of quickly. At the time I was building, there was a lot of furniture. There was a lot of furniture makers <coughs> who um, who make camper van furniture. Who were literally they were booked up because of the uh, lockdown and what have you. They they were they had lots and lots of back orders to fulfil. So I just went with IKEA. Um, I've all of the joints. I glued to strengthen them and I've also done on a bit of work in terms of um, customizing them and modifying them to suit my purposes so I put in this one I've put in an additional shelf and you can see down there that's my Truma heater so that's where that lives you see all the storage I have in there for shoes and uh, all the other stuff that you need to carry. I put a vent in there that's uh, necessary for the Truma to, to, so that it can draw in cool air and then heat it up. In this side I have my grey water tank and I also use it for storing my uh, my drinking water because I, I, although I've got the water tank I drink bottled water, I don't drink tap water, never have, not for, for a long time. I might occasionally have a cup of tea made with tap water if I'm visiting a friend or something, but as a rule I avoid drinking tap water. Uh, I have the, uh, the shelf over the cab. I keep mostly towels and my coats up there. Um, I think my camera tripod's up there and my little camping chair, rucksacks, just the stuff that I, I that's lightweight that I can just cram in there. The two end cupboards here have my clothes in. I've got to be careful because I'll probably drop out. I have these storage bags with, which are so you see gym shorts, gym tops, that's uh, socks and underwear, socks there. And then in that one I have all my t-shirts, jeans. Again, they're organised into those bags, so I can just pull out a bag, pull out what I need and then stuff it all back in again. I don't have any necessity for a wardrobe, I don't have any clothes that need hanging up. I've got the wall lights there, they're really good at night when I lie in bed reading a book I'll, I can just put on one of these reading lights, the low low wattage 
so they're not taking up heaps of power and also in the skylight I have I have lights in that as well which is really nice at night when Bronson's on the bed I close the uh, I close the the blind and I'll put that light on and sometimes I'll just sit with sitting here with that one light on so just onto the uh, just onto the fridge I have this little mat on the top just to protect the top of the fridge dust on there right so it's a Dometic as I've said and it's a freezer as well so this is the freezer side all the good stuff in there sausages and chicken and what have you and this is the fridge I've been really impressed with this to be honest with you it's 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 Bluetooth so I can I can set the temperature in both the freezer and the fridge compartments using the uh, mobile phone app. Like I say, I just keep that on there because Bronson also uses this as a step up to the bed. And I think I think that probably just about covers it. I've covered off on the electrical system and everything. So I'm living uh, full time in here now. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that look around um, the van and um, I do have more detailed um, build videos that show how I've done the installation of the main um, items and uh, how I built and insulated the van. In fact, I didn't really cover that, so I should really quickly cover that now. So in the floor, I've got uh, 25mm uh, Kingspan foam with um, with 18 mil of plywood on top and then on top of that I've got the uh, Altro um, flooring which is heavy duty uh, vinyl and it's really really good stuff you can see that down there I do need to give it a mop it's winter and it's uh, probably a little bit um, dirty so I need to give that a clean In the walls, I've got a combination of uh, rock wool in the cavities where I couldn't put the Kingspan um, panels, the uh, foam panels, but all the main places where I could get the panels in, I got the, the, the foam panels in. And then on top of that, I've got a vapor barrier and then the lining. Uh, all of the van is lined with uh, plywood and carpet. And then in the ceiling, I've got, again, um, the Kingspan foam panels with, um, with the vapour barrier and, um, and then the panel panelling over the top. So it's very well insulated. Now, I have noticed that being a panel van, there are areas where you, you can feel the cold coming in. And one of the main areas is the cab. Um, because the cab isn't as insulated as the uh, as the rear of the van, um, I've figured out that if you switch your heater um, from drawing air from the outside to recirculating the air, that that cuts out one of the main drafts that comes into the van. The other thing is uh, insulation on the windows. I have the um, the light bubble wrap it's like the the aluminium foil type bubble wrap screens that go in the uh, on the windows so i do that which helps um, and to be honest it's only on the very very coldest days i get any condensation on the windows i might get a little bit but you know i'm not getting like massive massive amounts when i when i walk around some of the um, some of the areas where we park up at night and I see other vans, some of the vans have real issues with um, condensation. And I think because this is so well insulated, I don't have that, that problem as bad as others. So touch wood, up to now it's been really good because I've not, I've not had any damp issues. And, and to be honest, what I do is I, I, keep, the, um, I keep the Max Air fan on um, at night, even, even just crack it open a little bit with it on very low and just keep uh, a little bit of air circulating through the van so it, it's that's um, that works really well 
Um, and in terms of living in the van, um, the only thing that I do struggle with still um, is just storage because I have all my camera gear um, and I don't keep it in the garage. I keep it in the, the van here and I have to keep moving it off the bed and then putting it, you know, when I'm, when I'm parked up at night, I have to put it somewhere else and then put it back on the bed when I'm traveling. And it's this constantly moving stuff around um, that you don't have a, a, a dedicated space for, um, to put it that way. So, so yeah. So that's, that's kind of an insight. I hope that uh, the video has been useful to some. Uh, again, have a look on, I have a playlist for the van build. So a lot of the more detailed um, stuff is on that um, is on that van build list. I think I st I, I, the last video I did was when I installed the LPG tank. So I, I think it was getting quite close to being finished. I installed the kitchen after after that but i mean it's really simple it's just units and dropped into place so there wasn't really a great lot of stuff that i haven't covered um, in my specific video so if you want a video on insulation or how i did the floor or how i made the bed um, the videos are there to, uh, to to review and give you ideas if you're looking for ideas i do have a, a detailed um, breakdown as well of the electrical system and how the electrical system works and how it was installed and why i chose it um, so you can look at that one and same with the plumbing system there's one for that as well um, so by all means check out my other build videos if you want more details on how i built it but for now i think that covers off on um, the van and um and it's really working for me. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope that um, you can um, give me a thumbs up and like this video. As always, please comment below. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because I'm going to do more um, sort of off-grid van life videos and uh, outdoorsy videos uh, because I think the... The channel is going to uh, is going to continue to grow, and and probably change slightly and and develop more of an off grid um, sort of nature to it because that's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about um, trying to uh, develop uh, more sustainable ways of living uh, and and having less of an impact on on the environment and also. Um, having less um, less to do with our state, you know, uh, be more independent and take control of your own life and your own destiny. Um, so, so that's the hopefully the future of the channel. So, please uh, continue to watch, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.